With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Tuesday, May 10th, 2016. A lawsuit was filed in the Detroit U.S. District Court yesterday alleging that Mayor Karen Weaver was directing donations to her own personal account. Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal reports that former city manager Natasha Henderson claims that she was fired after asking the Flint attorney's office to investigate claims that Weaver allegedly instructed staffers to direct donations to her own account. The lawsuit claims that Maxine Murray, executive assistant to Mayor Weaver, reported to Henderson in February that she feared going to jail after she was allegedly instructed to give step-by-step instructions to donors to send money to the mayor's personal fund. State records do not show Mayor Weaver's caring about Flint as a registered political action committee and city spokeswoman Kristen Moore declined to comment on the allegation saying that the mayor and city staff do not comment on pending litigation. At this time, no response to the lawsuit has been filed and no court dates have been scheduled. A press release from Governor Rick Snyder reminds Flint residents that an expansion to Medicaid coverage has begun. The Medicaid plan is available at no cost to residents up to 400 percent of the federal poverty level and is now available to an estimated 15,000 children and pregnant women who have been served by Flint's water system. Flint residents who are interested can visit the Department of Health and Human Services on East Union Street downtown or can visit michigan.gov slash mibridges. The Federal Communications Commission and Federal Trade Commission have asked mobile phone carriers and manufacturers on Monday to explain their methods for releasing security updates. Reuters reports that the agency sent letters to Apple, AT&T, and Alphabet Incorporated, among others, amid mounting concerns over security vulnerabilities and what the companies are doing to address the security of mobile devices. The FCC has asked the manufacturers the factors that they consider in deciding whether a patch is to be issued, and the FTC is seeking detailed data on specific devices and the timelines in which the companies patched known vulnerabilities. According to the FCC, a growing number of vulnerabilities associated with mobile devices have shown recently, and the agency notes that the safety of consumers' communications and personal information is directly related to the devices that are used. A so-called white hat security researcher was arrested after reporting a flaw in an election site. The Register.co.uk reports that David Levin of Vanguard Cybersecurity was arrested after exploiting and disclosing database injection vulnerabilities to Lee County, Florida officials that revealed admin credentials. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement said that Levin hacked into the website last December, detailing the method in a video alongside election supervisor Dan Sinclair, then used his newfound credentials to access other password-protected areas on the Florida elections website. Levin turned himself in after an arrest warrant was issued and was released on bond, although Sinclair says that the security researcher did nothing wrong outside of being a whistleblower, adding that the elections office could not have previously detected intrusions until Levin brought the security hole to light. And finally, the U.S. State Department has apparently lost all archived copies of the emails and text messages between Hillary Clinton and Brian Pagliano. Brian Pagliano, an IT staffer for Mrs. Clinton, who allegedly set up and maintained Hillary Clinton's private email server, was granted immunity earlier this year in exchange for cooperation with the FBI in investigating the possibility of Mrs. Clinton using a private server to send classified documents without proper protection and to avoid any required disclosure. The Hill.com reports that Republican National Committee spokeswoman Elizabeth Trudeau says that the department has recovered some of Pollyanna's messages. However, because the emails were not under the jurisdiction of federal retention protocols, personal employees of Mrs. Clinton are not required to save old emails. The investigation of misconduct is ongoing, and Mrs. Clinton herself is expected to answer the government's questions in the coming weeks. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.